You know, every now and then you meet somebody who is fascinating in and of themselves, but who also may be someone who sees what's fascinating in other people. Well, we're lucky enough to have a guy like that on our team here. He's our uh, special correspondent, uh, all-star Texan correspondent, because Billy Bob is an all-star and he knows how to find him. So, Billy Bob, who do you have for us tonight? Well, I'll tell you, sometimes, Jeff, we meet people that we know are just so special. Our next guest, this guest coming up, is one of those people, Christine Gordon. She is a nurse at Southwestern Medical, a wife, a mother, and a real blessing to the universe. We just had the opportunity to go on location and sit down and visit with her. You know, sometimes in life, we are blessed to meet somebody who is very compassionate, extremely capable in their chosen field, and you know that the world is just a much better place because of them. Christine Gordon is one of those people. She's a wife, a mother, an extremely talented nurse, and very active member of her church, the Highland Park Methodist. She is a graduate of John Hopkins University School of Nursing, has a BA in English from Rice University, with a grade point average that I can't even imagine. Here is one of the most caring, dedicated people I know. The biggest challenge is taking all your nursing knowledge, all your book knowledge, and being able to look at somebody and discern what is their biggest problem today. Twelve hours, only twelve hours to get everything done to make something happen. So um, a lot of people who don't work shift work like we do, twelve hour shifts, um, I think that twelve hours is a very long time. It's actually a very short, frantic amount of time to help somebody who feels really terrible first thing in the morning. Um, feel a lot better by the time you leave. Billy Bob, in my bucket, I carry this little angel. Have you ever seen a prayer angel before? So sometimes um, I just stick my hand in my pocket and I rub my little angel and smile and uh, hear people out. I did a lot of soul searching in college and I really enjoyed reading books on my couch and writing papers and um, you know it takes a while to figure out where the paths converge with what you're good at and what you like doing and so I ended up with a degree, degree in English from Rice and then I went on and got my nursing degree afterwards. Although Christine was an English major at Rice, her medical side was already starting to show. She was made captain of a rather unique program where students ran the Campus Emergency Medical Technician Program that provided ambulance service. Their cages go off. A construction worker on campus falls when his harness breaks loose. He's unconscious. And that's when Christine and Anna went from full-time students to emergency medical workers. It was time to save a life. I was trying to convince the university to buy our own ambulance. I was the captain of the emergency medical services there. Okay. And so I did a study comparing response times for the Houston Fire Department to emergency calls on campus at Rice. And... Um, because when a 911 call goes out on the Rice University campus, it's to 6100 Main Street. Well, if you've ever been to the Rice campus, there are 10 different entrances you could enter in one way. You know when a nurse is really good at his or her job, they get the DAISY Award. Christine got hers last June. So the DAISY Award is through this hospital, and um, it's sponsored by a family who lost their young son in his 30s um, several years ago to a blood disease and they really love the nursing staff that took care of him and so they sponsor an award such and partner with Cinnabon because he loved Cinnabons even when he was really ill towards the end. Hey. Good, good, good morning, good. sir. Homo yeah. Fluidy was assigned to me through the We Care Ministry through Helen Park Methodist and um, I showed up with my toddler son and went up to his apartment and knocked on the door and just met the most wonderful man who turns out didn't have a, another person in his life at all. Family, really a lot of friends. Sort of thing. How old is Homer? Um, Homer was, turned 96 in July. Okay. And that's the exact same age as my grandmother, so it's no coincidence that I sort of feel an attachment to him. And he unfortunately slipped and fell on the ice one day and broke his hip and cracked his shoulder. This was in the fall of 2011. Okay. And my life was rocking and rolling at the time, busy with work and kids and everything. And it had been a little while since I had seen him and I didn't get to see him until 
Thanksgiving or right after Thanksgiving I brought him leftovers from our Thanksgiving dinner and it was a couple of days of absolute guilt. I thought I had lost Homer and not said goodbye and I had put off that visit for a couple of weeks and I should have been there. Yeah. And he, to make a long story short, he has now um, gone through a couple of different nursing homes and rehab facilities and now is in a wonderful place doing Fabulous. You know, as I was wrapping up this story, I find myself wishing that if I ever make it to that grand old age of 96, I sure hope Christine's still around to bring a little joy and sunshine into my life. Oh, it's a good story. You know, great story. it's great. It's, yeah, it's a very good story. She's talking yeah, about the angel absolutely. in her pocket, you know. And how did you meet her? Okay, oh. let me tell you how I met her. I'm at the gym working out, and I see this lady that's working out so hard you know, nearly every day. Uh -huh. And I go in there and I say, I really admire your work ethic. I said, what do you do? And she said, well, I'm a nurse at, at Southwest Medical. And I said, really? I said, it's amazing. I was out there two days ago. Mm -hmm. She said, really? And I said, yeah. As you know, I'm from a small town, 100 miles north Amarillo, and there was a family up there. A fellow had a stroke. Mm -hmm. And I said, I went out there to see him. And she said, what was his name? And I said, Grew to Goat, which is an unusual, unusual name. name. Yeah. Yeah. Pronounced it one time. End of the story. Two days later, I went back to see my friends. And his wife was there, and she said, you know, the nicest nurse came here yesterday. Really? Oh, wow. She said she met you at That's the gym, yeah. and she said, I just want to know if I can do anything for you. Let me know. And that was her. Aww. And that, that was her. You know, sometimes it's fun just to profile people who do the right thing. Yeah. Do the right thing. So right. thanks for bringing no, us that, that story. Yeah. do more than the right yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah go above do and beyond. Do the exceptional yeah. thing. Yeah. 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 You know, there's an, I, I like this. What if somebody prayed for an angel and you showed up? Oh. <laughs> yeah. and, that's, and that's what, and we'll that's what that. she that's what is. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Coming up next on the Texas Daily, we can probably guess all the, the worst passwords to use. Do you guys ever change your passwords? Yes. Uh, you should. Pinky yes. sex. Okay. <laughs> but, some in, I don't, <laughs> but some interesting passwords have dropped off the list this year. We'll tell you what they are. Stick around. <laughs> Susie, you got to change that password.